Hello, this is Billy Core from the Carolina Circle Mall Wiki. Today is Monday, December 23rd of 2013, and, and this video will be intended to be uploaded on Christmas Eve. This is my special Christmas Eve video. And what you're looking at is a Toys R Us Big Toy Book from 1995 that I got back in November. The um, U.S. edition. And it's got all sorts of nostalgia in here <laughs> that I um, think all of y'all will enjoy. Now, unfortunately, unlike the 1993 catalog, um, this is more of a bigger square shape, so I could not get it to fit inside my scanner, which um, really broke my heart. So what I had to do was I had to use a, a, a special scanner app on my... Um, cell phone that um, allowed me to use my camera as a scanner. It doesn't look as good as I think it should be, but it'll be good enough just for us to take a look at a few things, so let's open it up and see what's inside. Alright, this is the first page on um, the catalog, and what a first page. <laughs> You're looking at a... Um, and an entry blank for the Nickelodeon Super Toy Run Sweepstakes. I may have mentioned this before, but um, for those of you who um, don't remember the 90s or Nickelodeon in the 90s, um, each year, um, starting in 1993, I think, um, Nickelodeon would have a Super Toy Run at, at Toys R Us. Um, they would come to your hometown if you won, and you would go to your local Toys R Us, and you would be given a five-minute toy run through the entire store to grab whatever you can and whatever you got you got to keep and I remember trying to enter that back in the 90s and unfortunately I never did win also tried to enter um, the Nickelodeon takes over your school sweepstakes didn't win that either so um, as much as I love 90s Nickelodeon why did you have to be like that Okay, now we've skipped ahead quite a bit. Um, this is actually page 21. The um, reason I'm showing this is because um, I see a couple of interesting things I want to point out. First of all, I mentioned in the video for the 1993 catalog I did last month that it seems like um, it was pretty much required back in the 90s and, and any other preceding decade that when you were a kid, you had to own a toy fire truck. <laughs> Oh boy, um, I think I had a toy tire, fire truck, I mean, and it was a, it was very strange how I obtained it. it. I actually got it in either 1993 or 1994, and I had a McDonald's Happy Meal. So it, it was made by, um, Hot Wheels, but hey, it was, um, still a toy fire truck, I suppose, and that um, helicopter you see in the middle, that Tonka helicopter, rescue hol helicopter, I um, think I had one of those at one point. I don't know if I had one in 1995, but I think I eventually had one. Okay, here's the page after that. Um, I apologize for the blurriness of this. Keep in mind, I um, was using my cell phone's camera to scan these um, because it wouldn't fit in my scanner. Ugh. But anyway, um, I um, I wanted that Matchbox City on the bottom left like crazy back then, but unfortunately I never got it. I don't understand why. It was only $17, but then again, um, I'm thinking in 2013 currency and 1995 currency, it may have been a lot more, a lot more. <laughs> And right next to that, um, I remember Christmas 1996 asking for that. It was the Hot Wheels giant garage thing with this, you could connect into the Tonka, not Tonka, the Hot Wheels City, which I eventually had. One one for 1996, never got it, but I did get one for Christmas in 1997, along with my Model 2 Super Nintendo that I used to have. Very interesting Christmas. Now here's something I definitely remember having back then. Cool tools. I remember my my grandmother gave me cool tools back in the early part of 1995 or was it the early part of 1996? I do not remember. <laughs> but um I had a lot of fun with them. I 
he couldn't build anything with them, I don't think. Uh, at least I, I might have just been too stupid to build anything with them. <laughs> but they were, um, they were very, very popular items back in the mid-90s. Every boy wanted one, and I was one of them, and wound up getting some. I don't remember having the cool tools um, set on the bottom right, but I definitely remember having the one in the blue box. And right above that, I always wanted to have a, a model train set. In fact, I still sort of want to have one. Um, unfortunately, I've never been able to realize that dream, but maybe someday. Maybe someday. Because I remember, oh, it was May of 1997. I was spending... Um, the weekend at my grandmother's house in Winston-Salem and her neighbor um, took me and my brother in there into his um, basement where he had the biggest um, model train set I have ever seen and I, I've still never seen one as big as that before. It was incredible. Um, he had controls for it that were very complicated and I never got to see it again, unfortunately, but, um, yeah. Couldn't resist showing this page. This is the, uh, Power Wheels section of the catalog. I still don't see the one I had. Um, it was just, it was a Jeep that was just bright red, um, th throughout. Um, I see two similar ones, like the, the girl Barbie one at the top left and the, and that silver one on the bottom left. But, um... Nevertheless, I had a good time with that Jeep. I got it in early 1994. That thing was my life back then. I drove it all around our yard, front and back, side to side. I was all over the place in that. In fact, I I remember seeing this Jeep boombox at Service Merchandise one time when I was about six or seven that I so badly wanted to put in my Jeep, because at the time I thought it was supposed to be like a toy car radio to put in your child's Jeep so you could listen to cassette tapes or the, or the actual radio. And I could never figure out why my parents refused to get that for me. I didn't realize until um, I was an adult, or probably more like a teenager, that that was actually a Jeep boombox that had nothing to do with the Power Wheels Jeep, so... It would not fit in there at all, so now I know why my parents wouldn't get that for me, and I thank them for that, because that would have been pretty stupid. Okay, you see that big red um, pickup truck looking thing on the left of this page? It was It's called the, the Big Rig Truck, and I actually got that for my sixth birthday in November 1995, the same month this catalog was released. And I loved that thing just as much as any other ride-along car I had. I had the Cozy Coupe, the Cozy Coupe station wagon, and then I went into this. And I had a good time with it. I, I remember it even had one of those horns where you pulled the string on top on the top of the vehicle, and it would it would honk. Well, it would be more like a yeah yeah, but it still um was a horn technically, I suppose. <laughs> but um, I I had that up until maybe 2000 I want to say but it it got a lot of use believe me and I loved it to death all right that what you see on the bottom right of the of this page is something that I also had back then um well actually not exactly in 1995 but I did have one at one time the junior activity gym from little tykes I got that back in I believe April of 1993, and it was in our little fenced area of our yard, and I remember playing in it like crazy, climbing those giant holes and going down that slide, and it was there until July of 1994 when we replaced it with a wooden swing set, which incidentally is, is still in our fence um, in the exact same spot it's been for the last 19 years. <laughs> And so, um, in the late part of 94, maybe, no, more like the summer of 1995, that junior activity gym was um, given away to my cousin. So, um, it's never been seen since, unfortunately. But it was a 
a very little fun toy that I had a lot of fun playing on back then. And now we're in the video game section of the catalog, um, which I'm sure all of you have been looking forward to. Oh, we see um, a lot of interesting um, features here. Um, I see a Play It Loud Game Boy. Um, it's Nintendo Power in super hot colors for $50. Um, pretty much what that was. Um, remember the red Game Boy uh, I showed last week, the my Game Boy Pocket? Well, this was pretty much a similar concept, except um, it was multiple colors, but it was just the regular um, Game Boy chassis from 1989. So it was pretty much an original Game Boy, just in different colors. And um, I see one game I have, um, Donkey Kong Land, which I wanted to show last week, but I couldn't figure out where the cartridge was. And up top here we see, oh boy, Tiger Electronics Handheld Games. That is... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I mentioned in the last video, um, these were pretty much the worst possible games you could ever own. Um, they were $18.99 um, in, in 1995, but really they were only worth a dollar. You, they, The worst possible screens you can imagine. It was pretty much like static graphics, if you could picture that. And oh my gosh, I just noticed they have a Daytona USA handheld game. Because logic! And there's also something called the R-Zone by Tiger Electronics. It was pretty much a a virtual reality 3D gaming um, goggle. Which, from what I've seen, was pretty much a Tiger handheld game pressed up against your own eyelid. So if you can imagine that, that was pretty crappy. And also on the right here, you can see the Sega Game Gear, a personal favorite of mine. Um, and it comes with a Sonic 2 cartridge, which I believe mine came with a Sonic 2 cartridge. Uh, and none of the games that I see there, um, which most of them got blinded out by the flash on my cell phone, I um, never had. Um, I wouldn't mind having that Lion King game to see what it's like. And on the bottom there is pretty much um, Nintendo's infamous laughing stock, the Virtual Boy. Revolutionary 3D graphics and 32-bit power create incredible depth and sound. Includes stand, controller, and Mario's Dream Tennis Game Pack. And pretty, which it was pretty much um, a Game Boy inside goggles. Yeah. And all of the colors were black and red. And from the videos I've seen of it, I've never seen one in person. Um, that's probably a good thing. It was pretty much a complete piece of junk. It was not virtual at all. It was not really that 3D. It was pretty much it was pretty much games that are just like something you'd play on a Game Boy. It was nothing powerful at all. <laughs> And the crowning um, jewel of it was the fact that you couldn't strap it around yourself. You had to do like this kid was doing and use it at a table and look into it. You couldn't, um, you couldn't, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? You couldn't strap it around yourself unless you used a bunch of duct tape or something. And you can see you had to use a regular game controller of it as well. So, yeah, it was... It was a big flop. It was um, pretty much Nintendo's way of bridging the gap between the re the Super Nintendo and the release of the Nintendo 64 a year later. So um, yeah, it, it, it's still a nice piece of history, but yeah, did not go over very well for obvious reasons. And here's the Sega Genesis section, um, something that we actually got to look at the other night. Um, this is the uh, Model 2 Sega, like we saw the other night, um, which I still need to figure out what happened to the cartridge slot. I guess I need to put some Windex in it, but I digress. Um, you can see some of the games that were out in the later part of 1995. It's um, the Sega Genesis they were selling in this catalog was the Super Sonic System, 
16-bit system plus Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles game cartridges. Includes one control pad. <laughs> Only one control pad, you greedy jerks. AC adapter and R auto RF switch are included. I have an RF switch for mine, but it doesn't work for some reason. Oh well. <laughs> I prefer composite anyway when I can. Let's see, what kind of games we have? Um, <laughs> I don't remember this one, but I see one called the ooze. <laughs> oh, and I see one game I definitely need to get for mine sometime. The Magic School Bus. Um, a, a TV show on um, PBS back in the day that I really, really loved. I remember playing the computer games for Microsoft on the 822, but I've never played the actual video game version, so I'll have to give them a try sometime. And I see some of the cheaper ones um, toward the bottom, um, like Paperboy, um, which I didn't even know they had for the Sega Genesis. Um, and um, on the right side, of, on the bottom right of this, um, it got cut off because it's uh, the way it was designed. Um, you'll see it on the next page we show is the Sega CD, um, the, the CD2 edition um, with 16-bit technologies and super stereo sound with Sonic 2 CD. I don't remember there being a Sonic 2 on CD. Maybe they mean Sonic CD. <laughs> So, um, two I see right here are Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Tomcat Alley. I'm sure we'll see some more on the next page. Okay, here's the other end of the Sega 2, um, not Sega 2, but the Sega CD ad. Um, you can see the actual S Sega CD unit. I really wouldn't mind owning one at some point, mostly just for collection's sake, I suppose. But, you know, um, I think they do have some really good games, like, um, particularly... Sonic CD, which I've played on Windows 95 before, and I already know that's a good one. But the main part of this page is my personal favorite, the Super Nintendo. Um, and on the top right is the actual Super Nintendo set itself. It includes one game pack with five great adventures. I guess it must be referring to Super Mario All-Stars. And it includes one, just one controller again, you greedy jerks. And all that could be yours for $130. And reserve now. Reserve Donkey Kong Country 2 now and get a free Donkey Kong t-shirt. $10 down payment required. Oh yeah, I remember that game. Um, I used to have it on my original um, Super Nintendo, the Model 2, but I lost it when I lost the Model 2 Sega uh, Super Nintendo, so I'll have to get it again, but I do know one game I had, um, I, and that was the original Donkey Kong Country, which you see on this page, being sold for um, $47.99, and that actually happens to be my favorite Super Nintendo game. It has, I remember playing it on my original Super Nintendo, it has amazing graphics, pretty much the best of the time. Great sounds, great music, and a great story, and great gameplay. It, it gets hard at times, though, but it's still a great one. Okay, I see Doom, um, which you got to see me fail at miserably on Windows 95 last week. And on the bottom, um, for 1997, I see one game I actually do own. Um, I don't know where it is right now, but it's um, Tiny Toon Adventures, a personal favorite cartoon of mine called Buster Bust Loose. Um, I've only gotten to level two so far um, in the past five years I've had it, so I need to change that, don't I? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to meet what is considered my very first video game console, the Sega Saturn, which I got new at Toys R Us, coincidentally, in the early part of 1997. And I only had it for several months before I traded it in for a Nintendo 64, which I still own, but I um, still had some good times with the Sega Saturn. Um, I remember it came with a bunch of games. Uh, the only one of them I remember being is Daytona USA, which was a ton of fun. I also remember the day I got it, I got a copy of 
Earthworm Jim 2, which I always hoped they would release for Windows 95 like they did the original, but unfortunately they never did for some reason. Now, none of these games on this ad I recognize. I, I recognize the game Bug, um, sort of. Um, I may have had that. I may have rented it. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if I had that controller or not. Now, on the bottom there is um, is something I actually wouldn't mind owning at one point. Um, it's the Sega Nomad, and basically, while all it is is just a um, a portable handheld Genesis, um, you can play pretty much 90% of um, or more like 95% of um, Genesis games. Just don't expect to run your 32X or Sega CD on it, but um, it was kind of a failure, unfortunately, mostly because of battery life and a few other reasons, but I think nowadays it's it would actually be a pretty um, good thing to have because we have lithium-powered um, alkaline batteries now, and they can probably run a lot longer and a lot better, so um, with that said, um, I wouldn't mind having it to take my Sega Genesis games um, on the road with me or play them in bed or something. Um, of course, I can do that now um, with my actual Genesis because the because it's close enough. But yeah, I really wouldn't mind having that. It has it says plays over 500 Genesis games anywhere, full 16-bit Genesis graphics in action on the road, awesome side lit. LCD color display that might be the equivalent of a passive matrix display on a on a 90s laptop so yikes <laughs> and it, and you can and it hooks up to your TV for big screen play too so um, with the right adapter you could hook it up to your TV and use it as a Genesis I suppose okay confession time um, I didn't know the Sony PlayStation came out as early as 1995 until a couple of years ago. Um, I guess I just wasn't doing my re enough research. Um, I didn't think it came out until like 1997. Because I remember getting uh, my Sony PlayStation for my birthday in 1998. And I no longer own any type of PlayStation, but I still, rem I still own all of my PlayStation 1 games. They're in a box in the basement. So um, all I have to do is find me an old PlayStation 1 and I got all the games I need. So I might have to look into doing that at some point. But um, at this early point in the PlayStation's life, the um, the cases for, for the games were very similar to um, something you'd see from Sega, like on the Sega CD or the Sega Saturn. And can you imagine using a PlayStation with an RF adapter? <laughs> I'm sorry, that just seems bizarre to me. I see games like um, Ridge Racer, uh, Road Rash. I actually remember Road Rash. It was a fun little game. So yeah, I might never knew um, Sony PlayStation dated back that far until a couple of years ago. It has 3D graphics, 3D realism. Double speed CD-ROM drive, so it basically has a Packer Bell Legend 402 CD CD-ROM drive in it, apparently. <laughs> 32 bits of power, CD quality stereo sound, 16.8 million colors, and, and you guessed it, high quality full frame imaging, yeah! Did I just go, did I, did I just say that? Oh my gosh. I originally wasn't going to show this page, but... I just had to because, okay, I want you to look at the game that's on the bottom right corner of this page. Big John. <laughs> it's a game involving a toilet. Get rid of all your yucks to win this electronic flush and burp game. Why? Why? <laughs> game? Involving a toilet. What? <laughs> oh, what? A game involving a toilet. <laughs>
get rid of all your guys. <laughs> and look at all the green gunk coming out of that sewer pipe. Ugh. Well, that was intended for um, little boys, and you know, little boys do have this very, very sick and disgusting farty sense of humor, so I guess I can see why it's a pretty good marketing technique, but... EW! Gator Golf, give it a whack. Gator Golf, to throw it right back. Gator Golf, what could be greater than playing a game of golf with a gator? Well, as a 90s Nickelodeon fanatic, I just had to show off this page. This includes two um, Nickelodeon board games. One of them being on the left, um, Are You Afraid of the Dark? A fun mystery game based on the popular series of the same name. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but as much as I love 90s Nickelodeon, Are You Afraid of the Dark is one show I can do without because... I had kind of a traumatizing experience. Um, when I was about maybe six, maybe seven years old, I was at a deli eating supper with my mom at a um, shopping center in Winston-Salem, and right in front of me was this TV that happened to be tuned on to Nickelodeon. Well, normally that'd be a good thing, but unfortunately, it wasn't because it was on Are You Afraid of the Dark, and it was an episode involving a scary killer clown. Now, I think the reason it scared me so much was because it was similar to, the plot was similar to a nightmare I had recently had. It didn't have a clown in it, but it was still very terrifying. So... Yeah, that turned me off of um, Are You Afraid of the Dark for the rest of my life. So, yeah. <laughs> but to the right of that is um, a television show from Nickelodeon I do like. Clarissa Explains It All. Join Clarissa and her friends from the Nickelodeon series for lots of fun. Now, um, I really don't know how they could have made a board game out of Clarissa Explains It All. I've never really heard about this, but, um, and yes, I do realize it was intended for girls, but, um, I still watched it back then, and I still do watch it. It was a very, very fun show, but I still don't know how, um, they could make a board game out of it, so I'll have to do a little bit of research on that. And, oh, who could forget these? The, um, these laptop computer toys that were popular back in the 90s that you'd always see at toy stores. They were, um, you, you would think you were getting a, um, a full-fledged computer, but all it was was a piece of junk intended only to educa edu educate you. I think I need a little bit of education myself. <laughs> I never owned one, thank goodness, but I certainly do remember seeing them. Um, <laughs> But I have heard good things about them. Um, like I, um, my friend Jay Wakefield, aka Video Som Frontier, was telling me about the pre-computer power pad, which you can see at the top right of the page. It's activities teaching spelling, vocabulary, math, and more. A thousand challenging trivia questions. Spell check. Ages nine and up, and it was made by VTech. And eighty dollars seems kind of steep for something like that, if you ask me. <laughs> so yeah. Um, don't remember these too well, but if you but if you do, then um, then good for you. And now the videotape portion of the catalog. There are a lot of good tapes on this page. Um, I certainly remember the Santa Claus. Who could forget that? And <laughs> with Tim Allen came out in 1994 in the theaters, including um, the theater at Carolina Circle Mall, which I saw there. And it came out on VHS tape in the later part of 1995, as you can see here. And it's a very, very, very enjoyable movie. And also on the right, I see um, something I definitely remember. I never had any of these, but um, Disney sing-along songs. Um, they were pretty much, um, if I understand, um, tapes of, uh, oh gosh, I am derping out right now. <laughs> It was 
pretty much music videos uh, and sing-alongs for um, from for different songs from various um, Disney movies from over the years. Now below that, um, also from Disney, are spot tapes, which, oh gosh, I had these in the later part of 1995. I remember my dad would always get these for me. I remember having spot books and the spot tapes. And I was really into that for a short time, and I sort of wouldn't mind ha seeing what they were like again. Okay, this is the last page I'm going to show, um, and it happens to be the very back page, and you can see why this is my favorite page in the whole catalog. It's advertising now. Find the greatest PC software for kids at Toys R Us. See our new PC software department. So, um, yeah, I remember I remember getting a few um, computer games from the Packard Bell back at in the 90s at Toys R Us. Um, I, I remember getting um, a lot of the um, Kidsoft games that were popular at the time. And um, one game I, I see on here that I definitely remember getting at the Toys R Us at Carolina Circle Mall, and you could probably see it up toward the bottom, is Freddy Fish and the Case of the Missing Kelp Seeds by my favorite, Humongous Entertainment. Oh, good times were had with that game, I tell you that. Another game I see I remember having, in fact I still have, is Kid Riffs, put out by IBM. It's pretty much software to teach kids music. And fa la 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 it did me a lot of good. And I see some um, entertainment games at the top. Um, I don't think I ever had any of these, but I think a lot of you will recognize one of them. Um, Road and Track, The Need for Speed. Um, put out for um, MS-DOS. Okay, um, I see Math Rabbit, I guess is similar to Reader Rabbit. Believe it or not, I never did have Reader Rabbit back then. And um, Jumpstart Kindergarten. Um, there's a demo for that on the, um, that would come on Packard Bell computers in the mid-90s. Um, my A22 came with one, but I never used it for some reason. I guess I ought to give it a try at some point see what it's like, but I do remember having Jumpstart first grade when I was in first grade, which I really ought to do a um, Let's Play of that sometime, because for a, an edutainment title, it's actually not too bad. And that was the Toys R Us catalog from November and December of 1995. Um, oh, that brought back a lot of memories. I just wish my scanner would have taken it better, <laughs> but um, I hope all of y'all have a very, very good and blessed um, Christmas Eve today, and I will see you guys tomorrow for the um, final um, Christmas nostalgia video on Christmas Day. It's going to be a big one, but unfortunately, I still don't know what it's going to be yet, so I can't even tell you if I wanted to. So, um, I hope you guys enjoy it and I also hope you guys enjoy the 35 hours of Christmas music over at Rockin' Waves. So for now I'm Billy Core saying Merry Christmas Eve.